What's up, Mandy? First one in the chat. Oh, look, Jen's in the chat. Hi, Jen. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Chris Topher, 777. Six minutes till my interview with Tony Lovato of Mest. And uh, this show was supposed to be last Friday, but Instagram Live was not working for anybody. So we had to reschedule it for tonight. Um, I don't think you guys are busy. It's just another day of the week when you're living in quarantine land. That's the interesting thing about this. No matter where you live in the world, no matter where you're watching from, you're still quarantined as well. So hopefully you guys are excited about this interview. We're going to hang out. We're going to chat. It's going to be awesome. Tony's in the chat right now. He's going to have a smoke and then he'll be back. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully you guys can uh, invite some of your friends in. Why not? You know, maybe they want to hang, talk to Tony, just do something with their evening a little bit different than just watching TV or playing games or watching movies. So invite him in the chat. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to start in five minutes. We're going to talk to Tony Lovato of Mest. Uh, I've known Tony for about 18 years now, so I'm always excited when he joins me on the show. It's always a good time. He's a lot of fun. I try to book interesting people on this show now since I'm only doing it twice a week. And it's just indefinitely. I don't know if we'll continue after the quarantine ends, possibly. So in the meantime, I like inviting people on that I know are interesting and fun to talk to. And we always have a good time, Tony and I, and so I know this will be absolutely the same. Not the same jokes, but the same enjoyment factor. So I'm very excited about this. So I'm just, um, I'm, I'm not looking at the chat right now. I'm actually inviting people. Hopefully you guys can do the same. If you know anybody at all that you think this would interest, the live interview show, Go ahead and let them know we're going to start soon. Um, let's see. Where that the wave button go? I don't know what that means. Hey, Lucy Murray. Welcome to the chat. People say I touch my face too much and I scratch too much. So today I'm going to try as hard as I can for the entire interview not to uh, scratch my face. Hello, E. Medina. Thanks for joining the chat. What's up, Adam Plost out there in Texas? How you doing, buddy? Blue Boy, New Jersey, back again. Thanks for joining me again. We got Danielle, first fan in the chat room. Awesome, great to see you here. S Perry 0928 in the chat as well. Um, we got all my friends were glorious. Hello again. Um, you had an amazing questions last week, so I'm very excited that you're back here again tonight. We got Selena Miranda in the chat. Um, I'm excited. This is a makeup interview from last Friday with Tony Lovato of Mest. Normally, I'm on Fridays and Saturdays now at 7 o'clock West Coast time. This Friday, I'm going to talk to my old friend Kevin. He used to be in a great band called Ghost Town, and now he's doing things himself under the name Kevin Ghost. So Kevin Ghost will be joining me on Friday. And then Saturday, one of my all-time favorite bands since 1996, Chris the Singer of Less Than Jake, will be on the show. So I'm really excited to talk with him. I'm already thinking ahead about next week, working on Zebrahead, the Ataris, I just love talking and it gives me an excuse to leave the apartment for a little bit because you're not really supposed to go out of the house unless you're going to a grocery store, but I'm really just sitting on the staircase so I'm not actually technically out of the house. And I have my scarf, so if anybody walks by, I can just cover up and I'll avoid the drama. But hopefully you, you guys are all safe uh, in your homes and uh, please stick around. And like I said, I'm just going through my list right now and seeing who else would want to check out the show. If there's anybody you know that you think would enjoy this, please go ahead and invite them in. The more the merrier. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited about it. Um, and yeah, that's all I got to say about that. We're going to have a good time. We're going to start in two minutes. And this is it. This is how it goes. We'll talk to each other. We'll read the questions at the bottom of the screen and we'll just have a good time overall. We got Jason Knott, Beachwood Coyotes in the house. Um, I think, you know what, Jen is right. Maybe we should up the enjoyment factor tonight. Um, US Aerocat, Doug Beaver in the chat, probably my top three funniest friends. No offense to everyone else. Adrian's in the house from Assuming We Survive. Uh, we got Chewy Psycho 88 hanging out in the chat. OC Sellout, always good to see OC Sellout. UCLA April. All right, we got a good crowd here tonight. I'm excited. And then once I, I link Tony in, we'll get all the Mest fans and Tony fans that didn't really see this ad about tonight, and then they'll just pop in. Coronavirus. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can also send questions in the question box. Um, so I look forward to that as well. Candace Meredith is in the chat. And uh, this will be fun. 
So I, we know, I know a lot of people in here and also making a bunch of new friends. Hopefully you enjoy the show and you continue to follow me on uh, DJ Ross or on Instagram. Um, you like the stash. Thank you. This is inspired. This is all Jen's idea. So if you like it, tell her. Um, there's stubble too, but actually it looks more mustachey on this camera. You can't really see the rest of it. All right. So guess what, guys? It's 7 o'clock. I don't know if Tony's still smoking or what he's up to, but if he's ready, we're going to invite him in the chat and we're going to get this thing going because, you know, phones... We don't want it to go, you know, we don't want it to die or anything like that in the middle of the interview. I got 85%, so should be pretty good. We'll probably talk from like 30 to 40 minutes. Maybe he'll play a song. I don't know. Adrian said he just ran to his phone. So, yeah, he's not even in the chat. So get in the chat, Tony, please. He was in the chat at one point. Send me a request, and we'll start this the right way. Um, so we're ready to get things going in just a second. And... If you have questions, you can put them in the chat box. If you want to roast me, go ahead. Uh, everybody watching, Jen, Mandy, Doug, please invite more of your Instagram friends in here. The more, the merrier. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Tony will give us updates from uh, his quarantine. What's up, Adam J. Peterson? What's up, Jill? So cool. Bionic Buzz. Steve Sievers in the house. This is a, truly a party tonight. I'm super excited about this. Um, I don't think Tony has played What's the Dilio in like 10 years or more, 20 years. I don't know if he's ever played it live, but uh, you can ask him that when he, when he starts the show. Um, yes, Doug, if you had friends, you'd invite them. I, I agree. I feel the same way. Um, still waiting for Tony. Tony Lovato. It's like the world's longest smoke break. I stressed him out already with these tough questions. Didn't even ask him the questions yet, and he's already stressed out just thinking about it. So hopefully Tony will get back here soon. Um, Adrian, thanks for uh, letting me know. <laughs> it's the Dilio, not the Dilio, Jen, but close. Update on the mustache, Bionic Buzz. I think it's like day 16. Uh, I definitely play with it all day long, which I was told is really annoying and I shouldn't do that. So I'm going to try my best to stop it. Um, I know Danielle's not a fan of mustaches unless it's on Jack Black, but I think it looks pretty good on me. I'm actually enjoying this. Um, still waiting for Tony. Maybe we're trying to... Uh, Go for round three and reschedule this interview too. No, I'm just kidding. He probably just is outside and running upstairs. All right, he wants to video chat. I think we should video chat. Lovato, let's get it going. Waiting for Tony Lovato. This time it's going to work. Yeah. Made it. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? You were gone for three minutes and seven people said, what's the dealio? It was going to happen. In that case, maybe we should reschedule this. <laughs> I have a question. I, I, I know you did uh, your album in full. Did you skip What's the Dilio when you played out in Chicago? You didn't even play that song live, and it was a, a full album show. No, it wasn't a full album show. It was not? Oh, okay. Well, it, it was playing the record in its entirety with... Minus one. <laughs> no, it was, what did we have? We said with um, surprises. Okay. So the surprise was that you weren't going to play What's the Dealio. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen you play it live, and I was, I've been coming to see you since 2002. I don't think even then you played it live. Maybe once, and I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, we stopped playing it real early on into our career. It didn't make sense to play it. Was it one of those songs where you, you weren't sure if you wanted to record it, and they told you this, this is like the one, and this will be the signal, and you kind of fought to not have it be the signal? No. Okay, so... I don't want to stay on the subject for too long. because no, that's I, cool. I'm grilling, you, I'm grilling you tonight. You, you are. Um, Hard-hitting questions the second I get on this fucking thing. Yes. Um, I've never asked no. you this. <clears throat> the reason why, honestly, is that uh, we, we recorded it. I mean, without a doubt, it was probably one of the songs that got us signed. Because the label was like, oh, this sounds like a, a, a pop song that we could fucking go to rock radio to cross it over to, to pop radio because at the time sugar ray was still around mess mass mouth was around so they were like they were just seeing dollar signs um yeah. but when i wrote the song i didn't write it as like a fucking serious song i wrote it as a joke song like you can listen to any punk band the offspring have all those weird fucking weird you know corny joke songs i'll have a or fucking no effects they have fucking weird joke songs that's all it really was but the label took it so serious that it sort of killed what it was for us. Okay. Um, and then they took it to radio. And because we were a brand new band, a lot of people, um, they ended up 
hearing that song first and then thinking that that's what our band was. And if you listen to the that record, Waste and Time in its entirety, you can tell 100% that's, that song does not represent us as a band by any means. No. But the only so, difference is that Offspring, though, still play those songs, though. They'll play Pretty Fly and they'll play Original Prankster. They do play those songs live. They do play those songs live because they were massive hits. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for them to continue to play those songs live because there's a large audience that wants to hear it. Yeah. Although it was released as a single for us, it wasn't a massive hit or anything like that. So to us, it's just another song that doesn't fit yeah. in the set list. So that was pretty much where I decided uh, it's not going to. doesn't make sense. There's other well, songs that have that vibe that aren't fucking as corny as that shit. Like yeah. Keith Moving On has that vibe. Reasons has that vibe. You know, there's other songs that when, when writing a set list, you sort of want to write a roller coaster of a set list. Um, and there's other songs that I'd rather put in there than that song, to be honest. So, is there like a second song that you don't want to play, or that's just the one? Like every, all your records, is there like number two that you don't want to play either? Um, Maybe they there's, request there, there's a shit ton of songs that we've never played live. Wow. Um, but that's the only one that we're questioned. Why? Like, why don't you play the song? Because like, people have seen video, you know, the video, and then they're like, yeah. Because because it was a single, people expect you to play it, you know. But I guess we take the Nirvana approach to it all. And uh, you mentioned Mark McGrath and Sugar Ray. If you guys are looking for a video to watch after this, I don't know. If <laughs> any, have you ever seen? There's a video on YouTube. If you look up Sugar Gay, it's a video I think from the mid 2000s where Mark McGrath is leaving a bar drunk, and a and a young kid yells Sugar Gay, and Mark gets really angry and in his face. And it's just a ridiculous video. And I, I didn't see this till a year or two ago, and now I'm obsessed with it. I would imagine it's great. If somebody were to say that to him now, he'd probably laugh. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to link it to you also when we're done with this. you got to see this video. It's just Please such do. an easy, dumb joke to get offended by. Like, how many people said that, like, before that moment when it was on video, you know? Yeah, and that was probably still the time where he was so worried about being considered not a real band. Yeah. And now, uh, you ever, if you ever watch the dude on fucking Rock and Roll Jeopardy, he knows everything about every band, every song. Like, he loves music. Like, and you listen to their early records. What, what were they called before they were Sugar Ray? Wait, I know this stuff. Shr uh, Shrinky Dings. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, my thing might have froze because I, I said that. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were a fucking yeah. hardcore. I mean, they were a hardcore punk band, as was Smash Mouth was a fucking hard yep. punk band. So was Goo Goo Dolls were a thrash, fucking thrash band. Like, you know, things change. But for Mess, I mean, you've always been a punk band, even if you go back and listen to them Mo 40s, it's, you know, not too Yeah, different. I mean, we were, we were heavily influenced by like the punk ska sort of slapstick was a band from Chicago. We were influenced by Operation Ivy. Like that yeah. was our first record, you know, that it was very, very punk ska-ish, but, um, you know, got more I punk as the record. I have a question for the people chatting. So I, I found you back in 2002. Um, I don't remember exactly where, probably because I loved Goldfinger and I was into show off and everything was happening with you guys. Probably, I was, was going to say probably 2001. Maybe even 2001. I'm wondering all these viewers at home, let us know how you found this because it's 18 years later and I feel like new people are still finding you. It seems like there are young kids at all the shows and watching your videos and I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think it's just that generation thing where luckily <clears throat> like punk rock has had its i wouldn't say subgenres, but it's it keeps doing the generation sort of thing so when you get the the pop punk bands which a lot of them are way more pop than yeah. than than punk these days but still their influences were us so the same way that probably a lot of people found out about bad religion rancid no effects the bands that influenced us people might have found out about them through us you know so it's the same thing of a young kid maybe listening to like i don't know all time low or whatever you know pop punk band is around these days that you know we influence so cool. uh, a few people are saying they saw you open for goldfinger that's probably where i found you also back in the early <laughs> you got a bunch of good charlottes on there also yeah i mean early days we did uh, a lot of touring with goldfinger so that would make sense a lot of touring with good charlotte Sugar Cult, fuck, man, they, real big fish. You know, it was like we sort of tour after tour, just fucking jump on each other's tours. That's great, though. Yeah, uh, like from just reading different stories here, Lake Shore sub 
sub subtlety subtleties. What a hard word to say, subtleties. Lakeshore subtleties says, I've been listening to mess since I was 15 and I'm about to be 35. That's so cool. When is it from Blue Island? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Bionic Buzz, also known as Steve Sievers, says a wonderful tour, a great tour, was Goldfinger, Real Big Fish, Sugar Cult, and Mest. That does sound like a good tour. Wow. That was a fucking fantastic tour and a fun one, nonetheless. Wow. Self-titled 2003 is when UCLA April found you. That might have uh, been. Uh, we got... That was so, fucking Warped war Tour, and, and we did a tour with Charlotte, and then we brought out Fall Out Boy and Masked Romance in that year. Amazing. And uh, Kaya says they found you opening for The Urge. I remember The Urge. The old school. That was our wow. That was our very first tour that we ever did. I still I literally have the piece of paper that my mom printed out so she knew where I was at. She printed out on her computer. And I literally, that piece of paper is sitting downstairs right now where I'm in my little area. Buffering. Hold on, Tony, you're buffering. Did we lose him? Hang on, guys. Can you hear me? You guys still there with me? We just lost Tony. I'm just going to grab him back in. Sorry about that, guys. A lot of people on here right now. It's like nighttime. Everyone's going live. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just that whenever there's like a million people going live at the same time, so it'll probably happen 10 more times tonight. All right. Um... <clears throat> but yeah, that piece of paper I have downstairs, sitting right in my little section down in the kitchen where I put my car keys and shit, still print out. I don't know why it's sitting there right now, but the the actual first, that's the first national tour we ever did was with The Urge. Amazing. Well, uh, tell me about the first mess show, like, ever. Like, how many people were there? What did you play? Where was it? Was it the same guys? Oh. Like, the very first mess show. The, the very, very first... When we got disconnected, did everybody get disconnected or just me? Uh, they don't hear what you're saying anymore. They just hear me. So you talked about the urge, but then, like, they, they're still on there. It's the same viewers now. And that just gets, okay. Cause it looks yeah, I have this, all the questions are still in front of me. They didn't go away. Oh. Um, so the very first mess show was, there's sort of two of them. One of them was a party in Nick's basement in 95. Um, but then the other sort of real show that we played was we did a Battle of the Bands in Marionette Park, which is the city literally next, one of the cities next to Blue Island where I grew up. And there was like five or six bands. We played a couple original songs and we did like some random shit like Weezer or like played a Bush song or some shit. Nice. Um, and it was, our, that was actually our, our very first show, like a real show. It was Battle of the Bands and we actually won it. That was in 1995, I think, which was pretty cool to win it for our first show. Do you remember like the first Mess song you wrote in full where you said like, wow, this is a, this could be like a big song? Like you, you knew you were on <laughs> something that wasn't just like a, you know, like a subpar song or just like a, an acceptable song, one that was like really impressive, at least to yourself? Um, I don't, you mean like, first like real song that we, like that we recorded or like when the band was doing something or like like in general like did you write like drawing board and at the end of it you said wow this is like a, what i can't believe i just wrote this song it's so you know, funny you do say that because when that was one of the songs because we were uh it was 99 when we got signed and i was literally sitting in my room trying to you know i, I had a bunch of songs already written but feldy was like you know, just keep writing, write a bunch of shit, you know, just write as many songs as you can. And I was, I mean, that song's legitimately, the words are what they are. Like I was sitting in my room trying to write this perfect song, so to speak. And I remember, you know, playing that opening riff and then singing and then writing the chorus and being like, fuck, this is cool. Like this makes sense. It's a, true to what I'm going through. And, and then when I finished that song, I was, I was pretty fucking stoked on it. I knew what, I knew that it was something special, so to speak, especially for being that yeah. young at the time. So I was probably 18 or 19 years old when I wrote it. Um, but that was definitely one of them. And then immediately after I wrote that song in the same day, I wrote Fuck the Greyhound Bus. So, you know. Back then, did Jer want to be like a singer as well? Like, did you guys want to do like kind of like a Blink-182 type thing? Or how did that come about where you started singing some of the songs? <laughs> 
No, I mean, when, when Jer first joined the band, I was in a band with Jeremiah when I was in seventh grade. Okay. And my, my brother played guitar, who was, my brother was the first guitarist at Mest. Oh, wow. And that was probably for the first two or three years. Um, and then we started to do the Oasis Gallagher brother thing where we just couldn't be in a band together. Um, but we were in bands growing up, me and my brother the whole time, and Matt, the bassist. Um, and uh, it just got to the point where we weren't getting along, so we went our own ways. And then Jeremiah could sort of play the guitar, but really, not really. And he would always sing in our bands that we were in. Like when I was in seventh grade, I played bass. There was a band called Captain Frogs. Okay. And uh, we played one show as a talent show at their high school. And um, we would play like Pearl Jam cover songs and just, it was very grunge era-ish. Um, but when we started Mass, I just asked him, I said, hey, we need another guitarist, even though he really couldn't play. Um, <clears throat> so um, like I remember for instance, when playing just a simple bar chord, if he'd go from the G underneath to the C, he would keep the E string wide open, which you can't do. So I, I literally taught Jer like, just keep your pointer finger up a little bit and it blunts out the string so you won't hear it. Like that's how bad he was at guitar when he first joined the band. Um, so what, was, what was the first mess song that he started singing live, I guess, with you guys or that he recorded with you? Um, off of the CD that we put out, More Money, More Forties, yeah that's two different sessions of recording half the record was when my brother was still in the band and then the other half was uh with jer in the band so we did some harmonies and shit like that i can't remember what the first song was but that record more money more for it was split into two years i think it was 97 and 98 when we recorded it um but it was just sort of like a sing some harmonies here and there and obviously that progressed more when we did a record with john where john really pushed that onto us yeah. Um, Steve wants to know, did you ever do any server chair covers back in the 90s? Uh, I left that up to Billy. Ah. Because Billy was fucking in love with that band, as we all know. Billy yep. from Good Charlotte, in case anybody's wondering. Yes. Let's see. Um, keep sending the questions. Uh, I'm having fun moderating this. Nice scarf. Thank you, Crystal. I have my, just in case someone will come walk by me and yells at me for not having a mask. Are you yeah, outside right now? I'm on like the staircase. There's no one really around. Right but it's now. fucking cold out today. At least where I live, it's cold as fuck. It's pretty cold. Yeah, but uh, I already got yelled at once for not being six feet away from somebody. I was five feet away, so I don't want any problems. I brought the scarf out for me in case. It's happening, man. It's, you got to keep your distance. Uh, Doug Beaver wants to know, how will you maintain your hair now that you can't go to any sort of salon for a couple months? I'll be right back. Oh, God. Here we go. I don't know where he's going, but shout out to everybody watching. Matt in Real Life, M. Rainey, Mercedes, Adam Peterson, Ryan Wicks, Matthew Croa, um, Tiff Burr, Kristen Morris, Jay Lewis, buddy. What's up, Jay Lewis? Uh, so, um, besides the fact that my girlfriend's, um, she's a hairstylist, so now I can have my hair cut whenever I want from her. Sweet. I still do use this thing all the time. I don't know if anybody knows what it is. Um, straightener? No. No, it's called the Floby motherfucker. Is that what it's called? The Floby motherfucker? I've never heard of a Floby motherfucker. <laughs> Floby. Okay, what does it do? Are you going to plug it in for us? <sighs> no, it would be too loud. There's literally like the commercials going around on the internet right now. I've noticed it's like... Yeah. The, the old school commercial. You put different sizes on it like so. <laughs> okay. You ever watch Wayne's World to suck while it cuts? Plug yeah. It, plug the back of it into hair? Yeah, he does the guard. That's, that's some of my old hair. Nice. Okay. And then you change these sizes, because I have a bunch of them. Bounce around on your head, and you're fucking done. Three they, minutes. They said to suck it. It's sucking my will to live. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does suck. It sucks while <laughs> it cuts, bro. That's wow. literally how I've been cutting my hair for 20 years. Huh. Amazing. Who knew? Yep. That's why I'm right, good. Keep the questions coming. Let's see what else they have going on. Uh, so <laughs> we tried to go live on Friday and it didn't work. And now it's Wednesday. So what did you do Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Like, what are you doing every day that you're at home? Oh, fuck. So Friday, since I think I started drinking when we were supposed to be going yes. live. 
And then I was maybe on for an hour or so. Um, after that, continued drinking for a long time. And then I, I don't know if it was Friday or what's today, Wednesday? Dude, yeah. these days really just fucking. Day, day 38 or something. A yeah. lot of people watching uh, have just started being at home. You know, you and I have been home for like two, three weeks already. Right. In California, it's different. From other states, they just started like a few days ago, I think. Yeah. Wait till they get to where we're at. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just, I think I just ended up drinking that night. Um, and then woke up pretty tired and hungover. And it was the hair of the dog. And I think I rode that train for like two or three days. Like, nice. and now you're back, able you're to stand good. up, just fucking just hitting the bottle, watching TV. Like, and then I finally was like, okay, it was like on the third day that I was like, I feel like fucking hell, I got to drink again. And I think, and then, oh yeah, set was it, we did our thing Friday or tried to do our thing Friday? Yeah, it's Friday night, yeah, yeah. So Saturday, me and Adrian, um, we played bags in the backyard um, all night. So we got hammered. And then Sunday was the, so that was like a two day for me. Sunday, I did the same thing, just kept drinking. And then I think it was maybe Monday where I was like, okay, got to stop. Speaking, so. of drink, speaking of drinking, I did see a question uh, a few scrolls ago. It said, uh, I can combine it with you drinking. Do you still go to a rooftop and listen to punk rock when you're hanging out with Adrian? Um, if you saw my house, you would not want to go on the roof. It's scary as fuck. You can't go on your rooftop. One year, I tried to get up there to put Christmas lights, and I just, I was like, I got down. It was way too fucking scary. And um, you now you'd be in the backyard listening to punk rock if you were yeah even you know actually the only time I listen to punk rock is like right now I've got my little weights in my room to try and stay in shape through this bullshit and uh, I put on the daily mix that Spotify gives me and just listen to shit. Besides that, you know I'm hanging out with everybody. I, I got a full house. I got like ten people with me. That's it. Only ten. Wow. What room? What room are you in now? One. Can you give us like a little tour? You want to turn the camera or phone? It's real creepy, but I will. I feel like I see a kick. Looks like a kiss poster, but it's probably not. So that is, it's a drum set in my room. Look at that. Then right there is a little mini studio. Uh, that's my Tim Armstrong guitar. Then as you, we pan around the room, TV, weight bench is over. Am I there yet? Am I there yet? Is it there? Yeah. Weight bench. Sweet. Bed with no sheets on it. <laughs> there is he's on it normally. Uh, we're just washing him right now because, you know, trying to keep that shit clean, bro. That's true. Just in my bedroom upstairs. Are there any pets in that house? Or no. Any what? You got any pets? Uh, I can't say. Oh. Fuck. You made me do this. Now I can't get it back on. You're, you can't tell me if you have pets? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh I got it. Get the landlord's listening, bro. Oh, I, got, I meant like a hamster, like a goldfish, you know. Yeah. Yes, we got 10 goldfish. Okay, that makes more sense. One for each person. Guys, keep the questions coming. Uh, so the next show you were supposed to play was in April, and that's not happening. Do uh, you have a new date for that or not yet? Um, the promoter hit me up about a week ago and was asking me what month, June or July, and I said, just throw some dates at me so I could get, throw it to the guys and sort it out, figure out what uh I would say later the better if you can. Because I, I, I keep... People keep debating this with me, like, oh, you know, shows can go on in May or June, but I feel like a lot of people will still be nervous. They may not want to go to a live show. No, it's not open. even that. We got to remember, like, the only people that need to be nervous in this type of predicament, well, obviously the people that have uh, pre-existing sort of conditions yeah. to fuck with, um, or somebody like myself, my parents live with me. So I'm shopping for my old man, you know, like I'm doing shit for them. But the concern is not whether or not I get it. I don't give a fuck. I'll be fine. Yeah. It's just passing it along to them. So if people <clears throat> are around their relative shit like that uh, a lot that are older, uh, that would make sense. Um, not, and the only, honestly, man, I've been saying this, and, and I think it's really true. The whole, like, th I think they know it's going to last longer. Or they're they doing it in increments. But they're giving it to us in increments to keep us like, okay, it's only 30 more days. It's like when somebody decides they're going to start working out again. Right? Yeah. And getting in shape. I always teach this to people. Write it down on a fucking calendar for seven days. Work out for those seven days. That's all you tell yourself you need to do. Once you get to those seven days, 
you're like, fuck, I did it for seven days. Now do it for another seven days. They're doing the same psychological bullshit of four weeks at a time so that it's not, I mean, imagine if they told us right now for six months, everybody's locked down for sure. It could be true, but when people would be rioting. They'd be looting and rioting and going Well, people wild. would just go crazy too, man. Like yeah. they already said like, not to get real fucking downer about it, but like, you know, uh, domestic violence is up, like all the crazy shit, you know, suicide went up, like the calls to suicide lines, all that shit's like drastically gone up. I'm sure, yeah. can't get out, they go stir crazy. That's why like, do the day that when it's nice outside, we go for walks. I mean, I'm doing all the right precautions. We'll go on like hikes and shit, but you know, we keep apart from people, clean the fuck out of ourselves in and out of the house, but you still have to stay sane through all of this too. You know what I mean? You can't just hunker down in the fucking house and go insane. No, for sure. And, and musically, it's good because I see a lot of bands going live every day. And Billy Joe did three covers already and appeared on two different late night shows, like in the span of two weeks, just because he's home also. And good if you're a fan of music right now. A lot of bands are just releasing songs every couple of days, chatting with each other. I think it's like cool, you know, to keep people I mean, sane. It, it's a great way to, to keep people sane, to have that still feel like we're connected. And it's and at this point for bands we can't be on tour we can't be doing anything we have to promote ourselves we have to promote music like it, it's this is the world we're connected to right now we're doing a fucking interview through Instagram yeah and and you know I was telling people last week I didn't do a show for like three years because I used to interview people you know for like fifteen years and once Instagram Live came out they didn't have this feature and a lot of bands said well I don't want to drive and I don't, I don't blame them I don't want to drive you know in rush hour traffic. And it has to be a right. specific, specific day and time in Hollywood to do your show. Now I can do it myself. But I feel like having a conversation, I think, is still more fun than, you know, going on by yourself and just kind of like squinting and trying to read the questions. And there's no like real flow. So I'm happy that this is like now been added to Instagram where I can like talk to people again and enjoy this, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I think since then, podcasts have become pretty fucking popular, too, which a lot of people yeah. do them via, like, just, you know, over the computer. I, I, I made a lot of mistakes, too. Like, like I'm sure maybe you feel you made a few with the, with the band. Like, I did this really early on in 02. This was, like, before podcasting, before even MySpace. And I was stubborn. I didn't put anything on YouTube, really. I didn't get into the podcast game. Right. And, I, I, and I, I don't even regret it in the sense that maybe I could have, like, made it, made myself a bigger interviewer. But just for the sake of having all that stuff documented. Because I had like a thousand interviews on like, uh, you know, buzznet.com and street and, uh, and uh, stick them. And when those sites shut down, everything just went away completely. They were all just gone, you know? That's fucked. So if you go on YouTube and you search Raw Star, you'll find like some of the big ones like Katy Perry's on there and like uh, All American Rejects, a couple of good ones. But I probably did like 5,000 interviews and there's maybe like 30 interviews on YouTube. It's kind of sucky, you know? Yeah, and I think the thing that's hard for a lot of people it probably was hard for you. It's definitely hard for me was conforming to when something new is happening. Yeah. And you're like, oh, is it really going to matter? Is it really going to stick? I remember I was on a walk with Joel um, Madden and Twitter had just started. Wow. And we were like hiking Runyon and he was like, yo, dude, he's like, you need to do this Twitter thing. And I'm like, what is it? And he tells me what it is. And I was like, what the fuck would I, why would I do that? Like what? It made well, sense to yeah. me. I'm gonna write a couple fucking, you know, I'm, I'm limited to the sentences I can write and people wanna read it, like that's fucking weird. Twitter's still one of those platforms that's fucking huge. Obviously they made it a couple more letters or words. Yeah. But when, when whatever we're doing starts to change, it's hard to, you know, fucking bite our tongue and just sort of go with it. It's hard to accept it. But, you know, podcasts became a huge thing and like, Conforming to, not conforming, but just changing with the times. It's harder to do when you're already set in your ways of what has worked yeah. for so many years. I know. I, 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 you, like, like I said, man, the reason why I'm talking to you right now is because I love live interaction. I, I respect podcasts, but I hate that it's like a recorded show because, I mean, I could essentially do it live and then put it on a podcast. But some of those shows where it's a conversation, I feel like I, me personally, I'd get bored after like a couple of minutes, you know, if there wasn't like a line. Yeah. And I think most podcasts have gone to the, the, the visual concept anyways now, right? Like well, some of them do. Yeah. And you can go in the audience. Like they do them like out here. You can sit and like buy you. People like sell tickets to you to go watch them record a podcast. Well, no, 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 I don't mean even that aspect. I mean the concept of they at least have like three cameras in the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they film everybody talking like it's still like a talk show now. For sure. I just think this is fun. I already have, like, Friday I'm going to talk to my friend Kevin who used to be in a band called Ghost Town. 
and now he's like under the name Kev Ghost. So he's going to do this. And then Saturday, Chris is going to call in from Less Than Jake. I'm excited about this, man. Gives me new life. The second I thought you said O-Town, and I got really excited. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ghost Town, close. But yeah, so that would have been Yeah, so Chris excited. will be on Saturday from Less Than Jake. And that's just fun for me because he's never done anything like this, he said, on Instagram Live. So I'm excited to, like, show people, like, what can be done, you know? Yeah. This will be cool. Well, All right. Well, Here's some more questions. Obviously, I think in, in this era, yeah. me and my buddy were talking about this. Aaron, you know fat guy. Because um, <clears throat> he's an office worker guy. He's a computer guy. And... We're like, I'm like, dude, the world is changing right now. Whether or not we realize it. Yep. He was like, because he, he works from home a lot too. He can, he can work from home because of what he does. My cousin Janelle, she can work from home because of what she does. And like, whenever I go to Chicago and visit, she'll take her days off and just work from home. And I'm like, if so, all these companies have to survive through this era and people can't work from home, they're going to realize why are we wasting so much money on rental space, stuff like that. So things are going to change no matter what. It, it's weird, like, which is going to cause a fuck up for a lot of the companies or a lot of places that rent out these spaces, stuff like that. So it's going to fuck with that part, that business too. So it's like the, the shit's changing no matter what. Like crisis causes change. And it's, we're in a different era right now. This is a weird, weird world we're living in right now. Let's see. Jen wants me to get O-Town on the show. I'm going to work on it. <laughs> there you go. We'll see I if Ashley, uh, Ashley Parker Angel is around to do the show. We we'll guarantee they're available for an interview. Anybody ever mistake you for, for Ashley Parker Angel because of the hair? Motown? Mm -hmm. No, come on, man. Have you ever been mistaken for anybody else in a band because they just didn't know like who was? I, you know, I used to, when I dyed my hair black, I used to get fucking Jacoby all the time. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. I could see that. All the time. Like, literally, where there was a kid, uh, I was at a restaurant with my buddy, uh, Jarrell, who's in that Hollywood and Dead band. Yeah. And we're sitting there, and this waiter comes up to me, and uh, our worker, I don't know if he was a waiter or what he was doing, but we're sitting there, and he goes, hey, man, he's like, I'm a big fan, blah, 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 and that. And I always do the, like, wait things, and I'm like, who are they going to mistake me for? Like, yeah. you know. And then I'm like, that's cool, man. It's nice to meet you. And I want to be rude to the dude no matter what, because I'm not trying to give anybody else a bad reputation. So I would always wait. And then finally I was like, and he's like, can I have your autograph? And I'm like, okay, I don't know whose name to fucking sign at this point. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, hey man, before I do this, I'm like, who do you think I am? And he's like, you're Jacoby. And I was like, ah, Jacoby from Papa Roach? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, nah, I was like, I'm not, man. I go, but it's cool. I get that all the time. And I'm, not. I'm like, yeah. I'm not a fan, but I'm not Jacoby. And he stands there for a second. I go, sorry, man. So then I continue my conversation. And then he's still standing there. And I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, for real, though, can you sign this? And I go, no, I'm, just, I'm not him, man. And then he starts laughing. Like, he gets, he's starting to get real uncomfortable. He thinks yeah. I'm fucking with him. But I don't know what to do at this point. I've already told him twice now. I'm not. <laughs> and then finally, he's like, come on, man. For real, can you just sign it? And I go, dude, I'll sign this for you. But I'm not the dude from Papa Roach. I'm just letting you know that. So you're saying and he that, would not that was his last resort. But um Ah, do you have any kids yet? No. You're going to be good at dog jokes. You're going to be good at yeah. dog jokes. Um, let's see. But that, that's cool. At least, so you, what did you sign it as, Jacoby or Tony? I didn't fucking sign it. No. Oh. Um, Danielle said, if you had black hair, I would think of Ian from Lost Prophets. I'm going to say too soon, Danielle, too soon. Well, I wouldn't touch babies the way he did. That's first of all. But, I thought you were saying to get him on the show. I was going to say, I don't think he's allowed to do that. I don't think he's even allowed to have a phone. He got called with Pretty sure that dude's never going to be on an interview. You know what's fucked up about that band, too? I got a story for that one. Oh, no. He uh, came over once. But he was, he was, like, normal. He was a nice guy. But tell me your story. They always seem normal, but they're yeah. fucked up, obviously. Yeah. Um, he used to date this girl, Ivy, who was friends with uh, mutual people. Um, uh, so he was around a lot, but anyways, let me take that out. Um, Feldy was recording the, the record for, what are they called, Lost Prophets, for that band. Um, prior to that record that, that Feldman was doing, um, they released this song, Rooftops. I'm sure you've heard it, right? Everybody scream your heart out. I think it's Up on the rooftops, better than a dent. Oh, your song. Yeah. So my buddy Tall hits me up. 
And he's like, yo, have you heard Rooftops from Lost Prophets? And I was like, no. And he's like, you're going to be pretty upset. So we're going to listen to it. And it's literally the same lyrics, same melody in that hook that we do up on the rooftop, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's funny. It's flattering. I left it at that. I didn't give a fuck. So then they were doing a record with Feldman. And this is when I was living out in California for about a year or so, two years. Um, and he was doing the record. And I had to stop over at the house. Everyone's going to see him. And he was doing the record. And I put my head in the door. And Ian's in the booth singing. And he's... Uh, I had just sent John some new demos. Hold on. Somebody's trying to get, oh, what is this? Um, there's the TV app that people watch movies together. Um, so I just sent John some demos that I had recorded. And he wrote me back about one of the songs. We talked about it. And he was like, dude, this is the best song you've ever written. If you're not going to release it, you should fucking sell it. It's a hit song. Wow. And um, I open up my door, and John's facing his thing so he doesn't hear the door open, and Ian's singing. And I hear uh, Ian singing the same melody. <laughs> oh, oh, da, 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 oh. So I'm listening, and I'm like, that's fucking strange. That sounds just like the song me and John just talked about. Uh, so the song stops, and I'm like, what's up, John? And he's like, oh, hey, what's up, Tony? And I'm like, hey, man, I'm just here to do some laundry. Gonna say hi to Amy Ball, isn't that? He's like, all right, cool, man. Shut the door. Walk out, Amy's in the kitchen. So I'm talking to Amy. And uh, then I mentioned to Amy what I had heard happening in the room. Just a quick, real passing. Yeah. I'm like, the crazy part though is that they have this song called Rooftops. And if you listen to like the hook of the song in the chorus, like that first sort of hook that they go into, I mean, we came out with Rooftops probably, I don't know, a year or two before them. And she's like, oh, really? Yeah, well, real quick conversation. Didn't think anything about it. And I, uh, I go out, what was it? I think John hit me up through a text message. I was like, hey, man, uh, you know, don't say anything to the guys. It's never blah, blah, you know. I don't know what happened before or after. This is, remember, this is 10 years ago. And so anyways, I'm out at a, a club where Tall used to, like, he was promoting stuff shit. And I remember Tall. Tall Cooperman, yeah. Yeah. So it's fucking pretty much the dude that runs Vegas now. Um, fuck me. So, uh, anyways, um, oh, wait, you, you just, you messed up your microphone. Can you hear me? Yeah, there yeah. you go. You, you were just trying to start shit by any means. Go on. Um, but John did mention to me, like, hey, don't say anything to the guys about that song if you see him okay. out. Obviously, I'm a couple of drinks in, and I'm not trying to start shit anyways, so I just real quickly just talk about that song, and I'm like, you ever notice the, the difference or, you know, the similarities in the two? Because who knows? Like, Ian might have came up with this, and maybe the rest of the guys never heard fucking Rooftops. Quick conversation, and I was like, oh, and Ian was singing this melody today in the studio that I just sent John a song that he really likes, and it sounds just like this new song, whatever. I'm just having some drinks, not even thinking about it. Like, the conversation's over with. I continue on with my night, no big deal. And then it was like two days later, I got this message from John, and it was just a storybook. And he was so pissed <laughs> off that I had said anything to the guys. Oh, wow. Well. And I was like, where, where, where? I was like, yeah, I'm like what? Ha like, it's not a big deal. I was like, I just mentioned the song that there's similarities. I was like, that's it, you know. Well, John was like, if I lose this record, blah blah blah, and that. Eventually, they turned the record in, and the label didn't like it. I don't know why or whatever, but in a way, I was sort of like, well, isn't that sort of good? Now John's after this shit happened with Ian. Yeah. Like in a way, now John's name's not attached to the fucking creepy fucking creeper creeper McCreeperson. Yes. Um, fucking Lost Profits. I was like, so in a way, I sort of did John a favor. There you go. But yeah, man, that story when that shit came out. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, by the way, because people might not know what we're talking about. I don't even want to say it. Just Google it. Man. I know. Just Google Lost Profits and Singer and you'll... It's like a waste of, our, waste of our interview time. Just Google that. Yeah, the story's on there for sure. Fucked up. Um, That's the type of people that... Ugh. Yeah. Oh, uh, King of Spades 311 wants to know if... Uh, 
I'm wearing the outfit from the Reven from the Revenant. You know, Leo DiCaprio when he goes and he fights the bear. Hold on, isn't it? But I'm also wearing it. You know, heat is coming for me. But uh, this isn't real. This isn't real leather. This is just like a, a little scarf and some fake leather jacket. I think we'll be okay. Love it, bro. You're vegan, right? Not not fully, but uh, I don't. I just can't afford a real leather jacket. <laughs> we'll put it that way. This is from Forever Twenty One for like twenty bucks, and I love this jacket. I'm excited about it. There you go. There you go. Why not? Let's see. Uh, are you gonna play something, by the way, or not today? No. Okay. Well, let's take some more questions. Do you want to know why? Anybody you did it on Friday. Stuck the other night. <laughs> Anybody that came on the other night, yeah. uh, they they hung out and they we played songs. I know, I saw. I, I watched, I kept poking in and out. Oh, um, here's another reason why I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do a stage at concert on Saturday. Sweet. What time? I don't know. I, you know the, I, don't, I never come prepared, man. I did another interview yesterday and I talked about it. Didn't have a time. Um, probably, what's what, it's Saturday night? Yeah. So like... What, what time does it make sense to you? We're on the West Coast, so like six, five, five, six our time? I guess probably five or six, yeah. Because then it's what? Seven, eight, eight seven, nine, eight, yeah. Eight. So let's go with 6.30 Pacific Standard Time. There I'm you go. Stay, I'm going to do a we, uh, Yeah, that's just for the U.S. Well, we, Ryan was on Saturday, Seaman, and his fans are from all over the world. That was cool. People were watching from, like, every country. That was awesome to see. They're all on lockdown. They should be awake anyways, right? Yeah. People watching, by the way, right now, let us know where you're watching from. I always love finding out where people are tuning in from. I love the Internet. I think that's so exciting when that happens, when you can find out exactly where these people are checking you out. I think that's so cool. Um, and it makes sense. So what, yeah. what would be, if, if I did it at 6 our time, what's an appropriate time for overseas? That's probably, let's say it's it's like six hours ahead in the UK, I think, or something. So it's like midnight. I guess it's good, right? Yeah. So I can just stay up. I think so. I mean, I'll be up anyways. I mean, what time do you usually go to sleep? You got a full house. You probably try to, to head out early, right? Escape everybody. No, it's a, we're no. A late. We're a, we're a late house. Uh, I'm usually in bed by like two or three. I sleep, on the couch. I sleep on the couch. I even go to my bed these days. That's late, man. Two or three? Wow. Every night. Let's see where these people are watching us from. We got Jackson, Michigan, New York, Indiana, Orlando, Florida, Orange County, Riverside, Queens, Philadelphia, the next room, Mars, nine hours ahead from Crystal <laughs> Cash Dollars. Room. Yeah. Well, that's Jen. Uh, Illinois, Michigan, Sacramento, Irvine, um, they want Adrian to bust into the room and scare you. Um, nine, New York. I'm coming. Santa Barbara, Rochester. It's great. I love the internet, man. Um, when you play, like when you do the stage, do you do any songs from uh, Not What You Expected, or is that not really in your set anymore, any of those things? Um, I won't because I haven't practiced them. Oh, but have you like in recent years, or is that kind of like, a, it's mess, but it's like a different mess kind of? You know, uh, I want to say the last time we played a song from that record was probably before the original album got back together. Okay, I wasn't that but, long. But right before that happened um, in Chicago, Adrian was playing with me already. Um, and we played two of the songs off the record. Okay. But it's like your Green Day warning. You might hear a song or two, but that's it. Which is fucked up because how great of a record is that? But maybe it makes it greater that you can't hear it live. Maybe if they no, play it a level of time, you'd that, be overkill. That what, that's, that's what you <laughs> tell yourself as a fan to make yourself feel better about it. Maybe it would be overkill. Try. Well, fan to fan at this point, because I, I got to do a lot of the warning shows Like when it came out. I, the only thing I didn't hear was Deadbeat Holiday and Hold On. I think I, and Misery. So three out of the 12 songs I haven't seen. But everything else I've seen at least once. So yeah, Jack, you never, wait, you never heard Debbie Holiday? They never played the song live, Debbie Holiday? Never, never played Debbie Holiday live. They never did Misery live. And they only did like 10 seconds of Hold On in some like random city for, you know. Debbie like, Holiday, if you listen to it, sort of sounds like something that could have been on American Idiot. Yeah. Possibly. I feel like everything could have just changed the style a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, one thing I started when I started listening to Green Day a lot again recently. Well, last year too, doing long drives and shit. We, we toured a lot last year. Is you really hear, at least I started to notice, certain songs, even on Dookie, but then the, the two records after that, 
that so much of that shit sounded like her plunk to me. Which is a good thing. I mean, you like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just never realized it at the time. But like, just when you're on these long drives, you're like, analy I was analyzing the songwriting of it all. And I was like, there's so many of those songs that like, were fully Kerplunk style. Like, yeah. even shit on Juki that I never realized sounded like Kerplunk to me. But I mean, that's why it's my favorite band, because every album sounds somewhat different, but it's still Green Day. I feel like you always know it's Green Day, even with the falsetto, which is kind of weird. Even I'll admit that. But you still know it's Green Day, but it's a little bit different. You know, they try to mix it up album to album, which I respect and I think is a cool thing to do. Not just make the same album 12 to 13 times, you know? Right. I know you're a super fan of the band, as am you, I. You know, you know, you know, like a lot of stuff, too. That's why we're having this discussion. For but sure. I can be honest when I say... Green Day lost me after after American Idiot. You did, did you listen? You sat down and listened to like Twenty First Century and everything. Okay, so when I listen to Twenty First Century, there's is that with Twenty One Guns? Yep. Love that song. No, you're there's only a couple there. songs. It was just like uh, American Idiot was like even when I first heard American Idiot, I was sort of like this is strange. But then eventually I got it. And now I always try to, to tell this to fans too, because fans don't get new records, right? So yeah. if you're like a super fan of a, of a record that was 10, 12, 15 years old, and the band comes out with a new record, you're not gonna get those initial same feelings that you get, because those feelings that you're getting from listening to the old record is the fact that something happened in your life, you went through an, a period and 10 years have passed, and now you're fucking looking back on it, and those nostalgic feelings can't happen the second you listen to something new. You have to experience life and then listen to something back and then it brings you back to that time. That's what nostalgia is. So I'm always like, give the record time, listen to it as much times, give it a little, you know, like, give it a little leeway, so to speak. Yeah. But, um, cause American Idiot, when I listen to it now, I fucking love the record. I love the record. I think it's so good. But when I listened to it at the time, I listened to it a lot, but it wasn't giving me those feelings, but I still didn't do that thing of like, ah, I don't like it. I just didn't understand why I didn't like it. Now as time has passed, I'm a little bit older, I understand the point of it is that it takes fucking years. It takes life experience to then go back and relate it to that. You're not going to get that right away. Yeah. But even when listening to, I don't know, man, there's something about those new records that like, I have to cherry pick songs. No, and I, I have this, you know, my, my friends and people on the internet are half people I know in real life and half Green Day fans because I've been, you know, a fan for so long. and. I tell them that honestly, I, I, I prefer the long shot record. I know you went to see the long shot. I prefer that over the father of all they just came out with and even probably Revolution Absolutely. Radio. Absolutely. Because I felt like the long shot album was the album he wanted to make. It was honest, real lyrics. And I just feel like he released that as a, as a side project. And then the Green Day album just kind of, there's really no, there's no, I, I'm, I'm a lyric guy. I love lyrics. I love, you know, finding things that I can relate to. And the new album, I feel like I don't relate to anything he's saying. Whereas Long Shot, I really got into it. I really felt like the emotion behind the songs, you know? Which is weird you say that because when he released, um, what was it, uh, Insomniac? Okay, that's, was, after, that's after Duke, yeah. Um, it was either, I think it was Insomniac. It was either Insomniac or well, Morning was the next one, right? It's um, Nimrod, Nim Insomniac, Nimrod, Morning. Uh, so maybe it was um, Nimrod. It was either Insomniac or Nimrod. Either way, one of the records, he's in an interview that I watched, and he's talking about how when they were doing the record, they recorded all the music, and then when it came to lyrics, that he just sort of yeah, went out Nimrod. And he's yeah, like, so I'll never do that again. And then I thought about the record. I can't remember what record it was, and I was like, I got the lyrics. For some reason, they fucking, they worked for me. Like, I had relatability to the yeah. lyrics somehow. It didn't feel so just scatterbrained. That, um, was, for, that was for Nimrod, yeah. Nimrod, I agree that Nimrod is lyrically, like, great album so that, that's what he was referring to for nimrod which has 18 songs so happy which to makes be like, no sense to me yeah. like how, how did if, if he just wrote those lyrics down i was like maybe that's what you need to go back to doing because like you said and the father of mine song is that the name of the single too right that that's ever clear right? father of all <laughs> oh yeah yeah father of mine's a good song though that's actually a really good song um but like that shit to me i i think like what you said, Longshot would be the record that he would have sort of stuck to with the standard Green Day run of records. Yeah. But being the fact that, what do you do at that point? You're the biggest band in 1994, right? Yeah. 10 years later, you become the biggest band in the world again. Like no bands really fucking ever do that. And he did it with a concept. 
even though he stuck to the Green Day punk rock stuff, he stuck to a, a concept of uh, a concept record and he had this idea. With the new shit that he came out with, he's probably like, I've done this so many times. I play stadiums. What I want to do something that's completely different, off the wall, creative, that yep. just gets him, ex gets him excited. That record, to me, is what record he made for himself, which is great, but it's not going to correlate. It's not going to, that doesn't mean that. And I, I, think, it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's cool because, like, if you dive deep, you'll, you'll know about it, but then, like, the casual fan will never know it exists. So I think it's kind of cool. It's, like, almost like a little special gift for, like, people that really look into their catalog, you know? Yeah, and reality is that if the record doesn't do much, you're never going to hear the songs live anyways. Yeah, but you were you were at the Long Shot show, and I, you probably had a great time, huh? And you, got that good, you got that good selfie with Billy Joe, too. Yeah, that, I did. I walked yeah. because at the time, uh, London's mom worked at the venue. Um, so I went there early with her, and I was just walking on the venue because everybody works there. And I look, and I'm like, that sort of looks like Billy Joe standing there. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, that is Billy Joe. One of the only people that would ever be like starstruck, nervous, awkward, weird to talk to. And so, but I still had to do it. I was like, fuck, I have to go talk to him. So we just yeah. bullshitted about music for a minute, but it was like, that's one of those moments, no matter what. I can meet that dude yeah. in a million. Like, I went to the, was it the Kids' Choice Awards with Benji? Yeah. Back in 2006, something like that. And I sat next to Billy Joe and his wife when we were having dinner after the fucking wow. award show. Just bullshitting, talking about, like, I asked him, he was, I think he was offended by this. <laughs> I asked him, because, uh, you know, with American Idiot, they're with the long-ass songs and the very, you know, uh, I don't it's more like Broadway-style songs that he was doing. I was like, have you ever listened to Meatloaf? Because I grew up listening to Meatloaf because my old man. Yeah. And, and on Meatloaf's first record, there's eight songs, but some of them are nine, minute, nine minutes long. So I asked him, I, like, were you ever, did you ever listen to Meat Love? Did maybe some of that influence you? And I thought he thought that was the dumbest question ever because he looked at me like I was a fucking asshole. Well, but, you know, I, I've heard it too, man, to that all revved up, you know, all revved up with no place to go. That, that is almost the same thing as part of Jesus of Suburbia when it picks up. Absolutely. And you go from one song to another and it stops and breaks yeah. down as you pick drum. And I, so when I asked that question, I was like, maybe I'm going to find something out that nobody else has ever thought about. Instead, he just looked at me like I was a fucking asshole and laughed at me and i was like all right maybe he was lying to me at the time that's what i think you know i read like every interview in existence around that time and i swear to you one interview out of the millions they said meatloaf but maybe the maybe the maybe the journalist put that in his mouth who knows but i swear it said meatloaf because i said I'm like look see see i knew it because that, that Dude, one it, song it is it. though it really is if anyone that's ever listened or, or, and loves the american media record go listen to the nine minute fucking yeah it's uh, bad out of hell. It's just the first one. Absolutely. It's, well, listen, after the after the show, listen to specifically the song "All Revved Up." That's like the one that like reminds me of like Jesus of Suburbia. It's a good song. There's the one too where um where it goes into the baseball stuff. It's the top of the night. Yeah, pa Paradise. Paradise the and and shit. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we got like eight minutes. I want to cut it right at eight because I want to leave the, the people wanting more. So now let's fire through as many mess questions as we can in the last eight minutes of the show. Let's do it. You ready? Adrian's, Adrian. been hiding, Adrian's been hiding in the room. That's cool. For Bring him in. Minutes. Let him join. What's up, buddy? We're going to fire through seven, seven minutes remaining of mess questions. They wanted to know. Well, I, I, before we get to the questions, somebody did ask me uh, uh, if, uh, about Green Day, if you ever opened up for them. And I'm going to tell you, after this show, Google or go to YouTube and look up Ross Star Mess. And you can see our interview from Back to the Beach where you tell the famous Green Day story from the Pop Disaster Tour. So go look that up after this and you can find out if Tony ever played with Green Day. That's already on YouTube. Yeah. Good I'm sure to get, to get that on video. That, that, no, I don't have to tell the story. It is a good story though, so make sure you check it out. All right, let's fire through these remaining questions. Let's go, let's see. Um, all right. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, did you ever see American Idiot on Broadway? No, but I did see the four shows that they did, um, New York, California, Chicago, when they did the record front to back. Wow, and Toronto. I went to that one in Chicago. And then nice. I hung out with the guys afterwards. Is Mess ever coming to Europe again? Is anybody ever going to leave their, gonna be able to leave their house again? That's a better question. 